So I read that you were actually uh, suggested to get into uh, film school by Martin Scorsese. Is that true? Yeah, I worked on a movie called uh, New York, New York as an actor. And I was 19 years old at the time. And uh, Marty saw a little uh, thing that I was writing, um, which was uh, for college, because I was in college. Um, and he read that short story and he said, you know, you're a pretty good writer. He said, you should think about going to film school. And film school was new. I, I didn't even know what it was. And I said, what's film school? And uh, he said, no, he said, you know, because he had just gone to film school. It was, it was a brand new thing. And, and he actually wrote me a letter of recommendation. Yeah. And you were in martial arts and boxing in your past. Could you tell us a little bit about your background? I, uh... I was lucky enough to uh, train with Ed Parker in Kempo, and I learned Kempo, um, and then I, I was fortunate enough to meet uh, Howard Jackson uh, after he had hurt his knee. He had fought Benny Euclides, and uh, he, had, he had broken his knee, and he was in rehabilitation, but he opened up a martial arts school, and I started to train with him, and I got my black belt from Howard. and. Uh, um, and then that's where I learned where he Howard wanted us all to tournament fight, and so we uh, we tournament fought back in the day when it was the Wild West. Wow, that's incredible! And also, you did a documentary about boxing that involved Muhammad Ali and apparently Joe Frazier. Yes. How did that come about, and who who all was involved in that? Well, um, it was it was really a bet because up until that time we felt. We, we were in Cannes, and we were uh, opening another film that I had uh, directed at the time. And uh, we all sat around, we were having drinks, and, and uh, we said, wouldn't it be cool if you had Muhammad Ali, Joe Frazier, George Foreman, Larry Holmes, and Ken Norton in one room and let them all talk about their careers and their fights, as opposed to having a commentator talk about it. So let them tell you their story, their background, where they came from. And then we went out and started to pursue that, me and uh, my uh, friends at the time who, were, who uh, uh, were pursuing it, I had a company at the time, and the first person that we approached was Muhammad Ali. And once we got him, we knew that everybody else had fallen into place. And then I went to Muhammad Ali's house and uh, in Michigan City, his ranch, and uh, I was fortunate enough to meet him and, and his wife, Lonnie, and beyond boxing, he's just a great, great man. Um, some of the, the courageous acts that he did, for instance, uh, he went to Saddam Hussein and uh, he sat with Saddam Hussein and asked him to release the American hostages back when Saddam Hussein uh, had captured American hostages. Um, you know, he decided to stop his career uh, uh, because he did not want to uh, go into the army, into the draft because he didn't believe in killing uh, the North Vietnamese and it was against his religion. I mean, you know, he just, I thought he, he, he just had a lot of character. What was the biggest thing you learned from being around him? I think the biggest thing I learned, he was such an easygoing guy and he always did the right thing without uh, any thought about doing it for the spotlight. He would do things because it was the right thing to do. And so for me, I always tried to live by that. Now, George Foreman was in that documentary. I believe it was made around 1989. Would that have been during his retirement period? Yeah, as a matter of fact, I talked to George about that and I said to him, I said, George, I said, you're planning to come back because he'd run out of money and because uh, he'd opened up a boys club. And uh, I said, how are you going to do it? I said, don't you, you know, you're going to go up against all these young guys. And he, and he said to me, he said, Dimitri, he said, a, a, a fighter never loses his punch. And he said, oh, he goes, I'm not going to leap around the ring. He goes, I'm just going to walk. And he said, uh, they can run around all they want, but he says, all I need to do is hit them once. And he did. So I guess you weren't surprised then uh, at his uh, world championship victory? Not at all because when, you know, George Foreman was one of those guys I met where I shook his hand, and I've got a pretty big hand, I think, um, but my hand got lost in his hand. It was like I put my hand in the middle of a ham hock. Um, so I, I knew that if that fist came and hit you, uh, well, if you remember watching any of those fights, you know, when he hit somebody, they'd go flying through uh, the ropes and out into the audience. 
And so. he would dent the punching bag, too. Yeah, that's right. <laughs> he was a very powerful hitter. Do you think he made more money from boxing, ultimately, or from his grill? The grill, absolutely, hands down. As a matter of fact, my producing partner on this, Rob Hickman, was involved in putting together the George Foreman grill. Right. Yeah. And for those that haven't seen the uh, new Kickboxer uh, Retaliation movie, um, it's very action-packed from start to finish. It doesn't end. Um, for the fans that have seen the first one, why should they go see the second one? And for the fans that haven't seen the first one, why should they go see it? Well, I think, number one, if you're a martial arts fan, what I always tried to do um, is deliver to, you, to a fan authenticity. And with Alain Moussi, uh, with a six-degree jiu-jitsu master, you end up with authenticity. He moves like no one I've ever seen before. He weighs 205 pounds, he's six foot one. And if you remember all the favorite things that you liked about Jackie Chan, and all the favorite things that you like about watching Donnie Yen, and uh, you know now Tony Jaw. Uh, the thing is that these guys are true martial artists, and Alain is a true martial artist. In addition to that, he's able to do some things that uh, 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 a Chinese martial artist who weighs a hundred pounds less than him uh, does easily, and so does Alain. And you have Jean Claude Van Damme back for this sequel. Was it hard getting him back on board? No, it wasn't. I mean, Jean-Claude is a wonderful guy. He's a terrific actor. He's, uh, he uh, actually uh, created the genre and helped contribute to creating the American genre. Um, and of course, he just needed to be in Kickboxer and it was a pleasure to work with. And also, Roy Nelson makes an appearance in this Kickboxer. Um, how was he to work with, and what do you think of the controversy with him and John uh, McCartney in uh, UFC recently? Well, Roy is a really good friend of, of again, my friend uh, uh, Rob Hickman, and he's a great guy. I mean, I don't know anything about any of that kind of stuff. Uh, for me, he's a great guy. He's a great guy to hang with, a great guy to have on set. Um, I'd like to bring him back for the third one and actually uh, use him this time and actually move him around. So, And he's in the big Bellator uh, MMA heavyweight tournament coming up, the Grand Prix tournament this year. How do you think his chances are? There's some big names in that tournament. Well, you know, Roy surprises you. I mean, uh, he's got a really great punch. And uh, again, uh, like I said, a fighter never loses his punch. So he's not afraid of anybody. Uh, he's certainly not afraid to throw down. And if he hits you, uh, you're going to get knocked out. Now, I guess this movie ultimately has more star power than the first movie with the addition of Mike Tyson. Uh, I'm guessing that probably cost a good amount of money to ha have him added to the cast. It did, and, but you know, Mike's coming back for the third one. He uh, really enjoyed working on this one. Um, I think he looks terrific in it. I think he comes off really well. Um, and I look forward to using him in, in the next one. Then we have a few surprises. We're going to bring even some bigger star power into, uh, into the next one. And I've read Mike Tyson's book, and he's pretty open in that about his uh, personal issues that he had in the past. From your view of being around him on set, does he seem like he's a changed man now and cleaned himself up? You know something, Mike? You're right. He's absolutely open. And he sat down with me in between takes, and he... And he said to me, um, the key word that came out of his mouth was gratitude. He said, I'm ju I just feel really grateful to be here. I feel really grateful to have my family. I feel really grateful to be working. And he said, you know, the past is the past. And he said, you know, I'm just embracing life and moving forward. And how can you feel bad about a guy like that? Now, Mike Tyson's had so many great fights. Which one would have been your favorite over the years? Oh my God, I mean, that's really hard to judge, isn't it? Because I mean, um, I would say that, uh, what, the first half dozen fights, he knocked everybody out in the first round. Um, that'd be a tough one. I mean, for me, again, my favorite one was when he bit, uh, uh, what's his name's ear off, so. Holy field. Yeah. Apparently they've patched things up now, because we have. did talk to him a few and, years ago. And also, he, you know, he takes pictures with you now where he actually <laughs> oh, really? I yeah, he, he loves to take pictures where he's actually looking like he's going to bite your ear off. So, 
And uh, Mountain, of course, is uh, Kurt Sloan's big opponent in this kickboxer movie. Did you write the movie with him in mind, or was he hired out of a casting call type thing? I did not. As a matter of fact, again, my producing partner, Rob, suggested him for the, uh, the end fight, and, and my biggest issue was, could he move? And, uh, and then we met him in Las Vegas, and he really is very nimble, as you can tell by the film. Um, so not only is he huge, but he's very nimble, and he's in great shape. And, uh, oh my lord, I mean, he just picks up Alon, and uh, he throws him himself, like he literally throws him across the room. Right. Now, does he work out on set uh, to keep up his strongman strength, or did he take a break while he was filming? They all work out. They never, ever uh, stop. Uh, all of them are always working out. He had to work out because he was in, he was coming up in a competition. So uh, he was sitting there putting in, I know, his uh, four hours a day early in the morning just getting his workouts in. And you've recorded uh, these movies, I think. Both of them had scenes in Thailand. Is that correct? Um, almost. Uh, well, the first one, half of it was shot in Thailand. This one, 95%. We shot about 5% of it in Las Vegas. Did you ever have any issues with uh, the authorities there having such a big cast? And I understand it's very easy to get into trouble there. Not at all. Uh, the ties are wonderful to work with. The stunt guys are wonderful to work with. It's a great place to make a movie, especially an action film. Uh, I just love to do another one. So. And apparently you are going to do a, a third one no matter what. From what I understand, it's part of the uh, deal. Can you tell us anything about the third kickboxer that hasn't gone into production yet? Well, I think this one, if you, if you like the one that we just made, um, Retaliation, Armageddon is going to take it even three steps further. So, for instance, it's Kickboxer 3. So all I can say to you is that uh, at the end fight, he's going to have to face three opponents. And uh, there's going to be certain levels that he's going to have to surpass. And, and it's going to be uh, ten times more octane than you, than you just saw. And after you're done with kickbo the Kickboxer series, I understand there's going to be a Jiu-Jitsu sci-fi related series? I, uh, I wrote a, a, a movie called Jiu-Jitsu, which is uh, sci-fi martial arts. And it's going to be a cross between Mortal Kombat, Jason Bourne, um, and Predator. And this company that I guess you're now in charge of, created the original kickboxers, right? How did you become in charge of this company? Did they recruit you, or did you love the movies so much that it was something that you wanted to take over eventually? Like a lot of things in life, uh, King's Road Entertainment was available, um, and I had some partners that were interested in, in uh, purchasing King's Road for the right price, and they had a number of titles uh, for remake. Kickboxer happened to be one of them, and uh, all of Me, uh, which is a major comedy, it was another one. Um, the Best of Times with Kurt Russell was another one. And so we've got a number of titles in there that I'm working on, um, both on an independent level and with some major motion picture studios. The first thing we did with All of Me is I set it up with uh, Steven Spielberg's company, uh, DreamWorks, uh, to do a remake. And what advice would you give to uh, an aspiring martial arts actor uh, that would have seen a movie like this, just like Al Lang saw Jean-Claude Van Damme when he was young? What, what advice would you give to prepare for a career in martial arts movies? My main advice is that don't let anybody talk you out of your dreams. Work really hard, as he does. Be the best. Uh, do things that nobody's ever seen before. Stick to it. And, uh, and just have a positive attitude. And you know, Alain is one of the most positive guys that, uh, that I've ever met. And speaking of, of Alain, what's the most spectacular stunt, in your opinion, that he pulled off in this movie? Because there's a bunch of them. Oh my God, I mean, shoot. Let's see, um, well he does the triple. So, uh, 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 the triple screw kick, so to speak. He does uh, the uh, running flip where he runs up to his opponent and then he flips in midair and then kicks him in the face. Um, uh, he does uh, a front flip, he does a back flip. Uh, what can I say? <laughs> so on the days where you're shooting that, he's doing that multiple times, I assume. He is like the Energizer Bunny. 
Um, you know, it's it's uh, 12 hours have gone by, and he looks at me and I said, "We got to wrap. Everybody's tired." And he said, "No, no, no." He goes, "We can do some more. It's okay. We can do some more." Now uh, we already know the first kickboxer retail or kickboxer vengeance is out on Netflix right now in Canada for anyone that wants to watch it. For people that want to watch this new one. You're only doing a select few public screenings. Where could they see it online or in other places? Well, I think it's it's coming out on uh, iTunes, um, and then I believe it's going to be on DirecTV, um, and it's going to be on cable right away, because uh, all the movie studios are shifting sort of to a media digital download. Um, and then also Netflix purchased it uh, for the second window. So they, uh, they purchased it for their premiere window. Now, is there an official website or uh, an official Facebook page where fans can look up all the information on Kickboxer? Uh, on Facebook, Kickboxer Retaliation, just look it up. And we post our uh, trailers and everything that's coming up and everything that, that uh, where the picture's going to premiere and stuff like that. Excellent. Uh, anything final that you'd say to our wrestling fans uh, watching this that uh, to make them want to go, go see the movie? Well, come and have some fun. What else do you have out there that is as good as Kickboxer? Come and have some fun and enjoy yourself, relax, have a beer. It's a fun movie to watch, and it's very inspiring to see the kind of stuff that, uh, that all of our actors pull off live with no tricks.